Hello, I'm MPX Toy Cat, and one of the great things that Minecraft has been doing with its updates recently is reinventing and reimagining parts of the game that really need the work. I mean, the oceans before the update Aquatic were pretty tragic, and trading before the Village and Pillage update existed, but it really could have been better, and with this in mind, 1.17 is coming pretty soon, and although it can't fix every feature that really needs a rework, although it can't fix every feature that makes you question why does this even exist in the game right now to begin with, I think it'd be worth bringing up five examples of things that really need this revamping because of the fact that it can show that Minecraft is a game that can add a bunch of new content, but also it's worth working on the existing stuff because there are features like the cauldron in the game. I mean, the cauldron is such a great feature, right? I mean, you craft it from iron and then you have a tool that allows you to store water. Wow, if only there was some way to store water that wasn't, oh wait, yeah, you could just put a water bucket in a hole or just keep a water in a bucket in your inventory. The cauldron is a remnant of a very early build for potions where the idea was that you could brew your potions in the cauldron, just like witches do, uh, but this is something that was kind of left on the cutting floor and replaced with the brewing stand, of course, which I really do like as a block, but then it leaves the cauldron existing solely as a way to store water, or if you're on bedrock, lava and potions, but the fact that on Java, the edition where it first came in, it just stores water makes you question why it even needs to exist. Sure, it technically stores three blocks of water, but do you know how much an infinite source of water stores? An infinite amount, and that's not to begin with the fact that using potions doesn't even take up water, so a single block of water also has an infinite amount compared to just free from a cauldron. Somehow that one use that a cauldron does have is actually worse than just using a standard Minecraft item, one of the oldest Minecraft items of just water. It really makes you question why the cauldron is the way it is when it could be so much better. I mean, the, you know, not only uh, could they implement the changes that we have over on Bedrock where you can dye the water to make various colors, that's cool and spooky. Add some theming, add some decoration. It'd be cool if you could store some lava in there. It'd be cool if you could store store potions in there. I mean, I love that use that comes from Bedrock, but I think it could go a step further than even Bedrock's revamping. I think that it really needs a ground up redesign, and although it would perhaps work best than a potion update of some form, even just leaving Minecraft as is right now, all you have to do is do something like, oh yeah, imagine if you could have Hopper below it, and then you could use it in Redstone, so you could automatically fill water bottles from it, and then you could obviously use those automatic water bottles to make a fully auto uh, potion pipeline. That's just a single idea without an entire potion update, which I totally think we need, but we need to move into something else that is technically related to uh, potions, but is just as weird in my opinion, because the never warp block is a very weird thing that exists. I can't even think of anything better to call it, because the never warp block is what you get when you combine nine never warts together. And I'll admit, never warts, although they could do have some more use, you know, the whole potion thing, sure, we'll give them that, but the never warp block is super weird because it's made from nine never warts, which makes it a storage block, right? I mean, it certainly isn't being used for its looks, as you can see looking at it, even as new texture is pretty bad, um, but it's a storage block for your never warts, except nope, it's not that at all. Unlike all of the other blocks made from 9 of something, I look at the gold block, the hay block, the iron block, look at pretty much anything, and you'll be able to craft it both ways. Even bone meal can be crafted into a bone block or vice versa. However, if you want to craft your never warts, uh, you know, from a, a never wart block, you cannot. This is a one-way recipe, which is fine on the surface if this never wart block has a use, right? I mean, you craft them so there's something, oh, and no, there is no use to them at all. The never warp block is a very bizarre thing because it was added in one of those weird phases of Minecraft where they were just adding things seemingly for the purpose of it. I mean, it came in the same update as <laughs> literally polar bears. Um, again, a feature that we could mention as a whole own video of like, why does it need to exist? But the fact that it requires so much of a resource to make and then does entirely nothing is weird because of the fact that it's an exception. I mean, there are two ways you can uh, kind of take this. One, we could make the never warp block kind of great. We could make some blue never warps. We could do some more fun stuff with the never because there is still kind of a lack of use for the vegetation. I'm looking at you, uh, warped sprouts, but um, you know, ignoring that fact, it's like, yeah, I think we should make a uh, you know more blocks for the storage of things to have uses in and of themselves. I mean, for instance, the gold block, you can craft it from nine gold and then craft it back into nine gold if you want to, but then it also works as a note block thing. So you put a note block above it and it makes a nice bell sound. That's kind of cool. The emerald block does the same, but it makes a nice little, uh, you know, like emerald ding sound. And also it's a way of showing off how many emeralds you have, but the never warp block isn't a great way to show off anything and doesn't have a use of itself. It's just a way to turn your actually valuable resource into something that isn't valuable. I think we should have many more of these bizarre blocks if that's the plan we're going for. Like, you know what? Why don't we have access to a beef block? You can buy nine uh, beefs together and what do you get? You get the beef block. Why don't we have access to, you know, nine uh, feathers together to make a feathery block? There are lots of fun ideas if we're just gonna have something uh, front of the wall. And if you can make it a 
storage block, then it's just a more efficient way to store things. I think having more access to storing resources in physical ways, you know, that you can actually show people is a great idea, but we need to make it so you can take it out of that. And the never warp block is just the perfect example of what a nine for one recipe should not be. I think that we need to change it. I think that we need a never use for the, for the warp block. And you know what, whatever, we could talk about it forever. And you know what, the next thing that needs an update is the desert well. I'm, I'm just kidding. The desert well is entirely beyond saving. I don't think there's a single thing you could do to the desert well besides adding a chest that would make it exciting. Except if you added a chest, it would just be like every other structure. The desert well is not able to be saved. Unlike the next idea, I would totally love to see an update themed around this because most enchantments are kind of questionable at best. I mean, if you look at say the sword enchantments, there is a big variety from knockback to fire aspect, etc, etc. And although it's nice that knockback is better in PvP and fire aspect is better in solo, Bane of Arthropods never has a use. Does that go about saying? My Bane of Arthropods was just a mistake to allude to the title of this video. Impaling is also mostly a mistake, ignoring that weird exclusive and or bug on Bedrock where all players that are, you know, in rain count as fish. But extra damage to spiders and extra damage to fish is just not something that anyone is excited for. And that's before we get to the point of like, lots of items get enchantments that don't make sense for them. To give you an example, Silk Touch on an ax or a shovel uh, maybe on a shovel you could just fight the grass, but a silk touch only really makes sense on a pickaxe because then you get stone instead of cobblestone, as well as being able to scoop up the ores. Uh, having on an axe means you can get the mushroom blocks if you know about them and if you care about them enough to want to get thousands of mushroom blocks, but otherwise silk touch is close to uh, purposeless on an axe. Same with fortune on an axe, fortune on a shovel. Uh, there are lots of enchantments that come onto weapons that don't really make sense for them. Um, another example is like, oh yeah, mending and infinity don't really make sense on bows because they can't go together. Um, lots of enchantments in Minecraft are entirely purposeless and seem like they are mistakes. I would love to see an enchantment based update where we really took a look at the enchantment list and we tried to make them more competitive and added a bunch more in if we really needed to so that there are multiple viable solutions. So right now, if you are playing survival, you have pretty much the same set of enchantments. One of the very few decisions people have to make that is mildly interesting is if you have a sword, you might put smite on it or you might put sharpness on. You can't have sharpness and smite. Sharpness is damage against players and, well, against everything, including players. And smite is damage against only undead things, which includes the wither, wither skeletons, skeletons, etc. You can one hit kill those mobs, but you don't get extra damage against everything. Or you can have a little extra damage against anything, but not one hit kill anything. It's a fun trade off to make. Uh, that is pretty much the only really competitive decision. Maybe that and like the bows having infinity versus mending, versus depending on whether you care more about the bow or the arrows. But the fact that there aren't many super exciting decisions like that tells me that we need new enchantments. I think a great idea would be legendary enchantments, like uh, one of the kind things you can find in the wild. I think, for instance, Frostwalker on boots made for a very exciting uh, potential uh, find that most people still don't play around with, but it's cool. I think more cool enchantments, more fun enchantments, and then most importantly of all, more enchantments that actually make you pick between one thing and another would be great because right now a lot of people feel like they've just maxed out Minecraft and it doesn't even take too long to do. You can get fully enchanted gear with the right enchantments only a few hours into your Minecraft world and then you're done for forever. Whereas enchanting could be this great concept where there's lots of magic and combining things together. Maybe you could even go with a system where there are randomly uh, you know, generated enchantments. Like it's a little bit of uh, sharpness. It's a little bit of unbreaking. It's a little bit of that. There are lots of fun ideas. You could go for enchantments. And I feel like the current system is just not there. It's uh, It's been patched together through the years. I think mending was a fun addition, if one that broke the game entirely. But I think we really need an entire revamp of that system. Just like when you go mining underground with your Silk Touch pickaxe, the one viable use for Silk Touch, you're probably gonna find things like diorite, granite, and andesite. And first of all, let me point out something very few people think about or know, unless you play with auto uh, crafting on, you can see the recipes. Because did you know, there is a way to craft diorite. Not a single person is ever going to do this. I mean, who wants to waste quartz on it, right? But theoretically, you can craft diorite, and it's just one of those dumb like, huh, that feature is such a mistake, such an unknown thing, such a, un you know, like a ludicrous choice that I haven't even seen someone do it in a single Minecraft video. I'm guessing you watch Minecraft videos now. If you don't, have you considered subscribing to see more? Yeah. 
the subscribe comes in the middle of the video. You're confused about that, I bet. But no, um, the fact that there are three blocks in Minecraft that come underground that, again, don't have any real use it, besides being pretty. I, I, I really like Diorite, personally. I think it looks great. I If I had too much, uh, you know, never quartz, I would even consider... No, I, I wouldn't even. Even though I like Diorite, I would never craft it. But the fact, uh, you know, that I think granite is really ugly. I think andesite's very ugly. I even think Diorite's ugly when it's not polished. Uh, these are three blocks that just didn't really ever pan out. They were added in one update and then entirely forgotten about with the next one. I think it's important when Minecraft adds a feature that either they finish it the first time, they make it properly rounded, like how the pillagers work in the raid or how the target block works or, uh, you know, even crying obsidian. Like uh, when, you, when you add something to the game, it needs to be fully formed because when it's not, you know, with the direct granites and andesites, you have to come back at some point because otherwise people just look at it and go, huh, the underground is now more inventory consuming, and what is the benefit? Many people will just drop their granite, their andesite, their diorite. It just makes the game worse for those players, and the players who do take it, what are they gonna wanna do with it? I mean, sure, it can theoretically make more interesting looking houses, but how often do you see great looking builds using those three things? Sometimes maybe using one of them, um, but then even if you do want those three things a lot, even if you are in love with these three items, and you're like, no, 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 room would be awful, how do you find them you don't, they are entirely random. There's no real like, oh yeah, you dig at these coordinates to find diorite the best. Andesite is found best if you look under a swamp and granite is found under a mesa biome or something like that. No, there is no way to particularly find one of these things over the two others. And then there's no particular game impact from them. And that's why I'm trying to say, you need to either had a fun way to find them or a fun way to use them. Otherwise they are just blocks. Minecraft has a lot of blocks right now. You know, maybe you think we need more, but I think granite, diorite and andesite were not great examples without having some use in their execution on either side of it. I'd be happy with either end, but neither end happened. Just like how bringing this video full circle, because who doesn't love complete shapes, uh, the potions in Minecraft are super interesting, right? I mean, the strength potion gives you strength. The leaping potion lets you leap. Even the, the slow falling potion that's the most recent, that's pretty darn cool, right? Wow, I sure do love Minecraft potions. Uh, that's where the video ends because they are complete and don't, no, 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 no. There's a lot of dumb stuff in Minecraft potions. First of all, let's talk about the potion of weakness. It's a potion that makes you weaker. Maybe the trick is that you give it to your enemies, or maybe it's designed to be there so that when you make a potion wrong by using the wrong ingredients, a very specific wrong ingredient, but whatever, um, you know, there is a punishment for doing so, and you, you know, it's there to trick players, and it's a fun bit of flavor. Okay, potion of weakness can stay even though it has no use. But what about the fact that if you try to do pretty much anything in a, uh, you know, like a, in a potion recipe and you don't do it exactly right. What you end up with is one of these bland potions, a mundane potion or a thick potion. They do precisely nothing. And you know, that's there to teach you that first you've got to make an awkward potion, then the awkward potion turns into those other things. Maybe that's what that's really trying to teach you question mark, question mark, question mark. But no, the, the, the interesting thing about uh, your Minecraft brewing is that it has a very one dimensional function. You always have to put an Everwort in, then you always put in something else, and then Glowstone and Redstone always work on top of that. But that's not the most exciting system there could be. Sure, that could be the main way that you brew potions, but what about if you put in a Redstone first? What would a long lasting water potion do besides become mundane? I mean, I, 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 mean, I guess that is a long lasting water. You know, long lasting water is uh, something they should make in the real world. Pro tip, drink water. That's right, this video was sponsored by water. Go to your tap, get 10% off when you use code TOYCAT. Anyway, with that said, let's go back to the video because I think, uh, you know, having different ways to make potions could be so exciting. I think having an entire grid of potions that, you know, you don't know the outcomes of. Like, oh, I throw in a rabbit foot and then I throw in a gas tier, then I throw in some redstone and then I throw in something else. Maybe that gives me an entirely randomly generated potion. And Minecraft actually did want to do this when it first came out. There were, there's so many, uh, you know, hidden potions that they removed from the game recently because the idea was, oh yeah, it's an entirely freeform system where you make what you want to make. But instead we went down a very fixed rigid pathway. I would love to see either a hybrid system where there's the fixed rigid pathway right now. And then there's the alternate route to finding like, oh yeah, if you put in all those ingredients, you get a potion that gives you strength one, leaping two, and then you know what? Like half of a, a point of first speed, like you go 5% faster. That would be very interesting, right? I would love to see weird mixture potions because although right now you can just drink the mix of potions that you want, having them in the same bottle would actually have a lot of value. Even if it's a weaker speed or a weaker strength, having those two things combined, really great. I think the potion of the Turtle Master was the tiniest hint towards this. I mean, it's slowness as well as 
uh, defense, but like it's it's a little bit too slow to be really useful. I think having more combination use potions at the very least, or to be more fun, having a freeform grid where you can place things in there at whatever speed you want to, that would be a fun way to make potions, and that's why Minecraft needs a potion update. Do you hear me right now? I think Minecraft needs to update its entire potion system. Honestly, everything magical, right? Besides the diorite and the granite stuff, I think everything in this video can be summed up by like, make Minecraft magic again. I mean, we do need to make Minecraft mining worthwhile. That's why the cave update gets a mention, even in my video where I'm talking about an entirely different idea. But the fact that Minecraft magic is kind of bland, kind of two-dimensional, and you can finish it, you can just be objectively done with those things, uh, does defeat the point of the game in my opinion. But maybe you disagree, maybe you think I've got the wrong direction on this, or you think I have the right direction but I just haven't gone far enough. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the uh, comments down below, and just in case anyone from Mojang watches this, read the comments too. That's where the crazy wacky fun ideas are, and um, yeah, in seriousness, I hope you will enjoy this video. I I think mistake is a strong word, but I think it was a valid way to describe all these things. And if you want to see more videos that are unrelated to this, you can find them on my channel. Um, and you can turn on notifications if you really want to see those things. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for spending your time with me today, because I'll see you next time. Goodbye.